be sure to like, share, comment and subscribe at the end of the video. So today's video is all about the thoughts. Um, so the thoughts are the fruits of the spirit. Um, for those who don't know what the fruits of the spirit are, I'm just going to give you a quick explanation and move straight into the video. There are nine fruits of the spirit and they are peace, love, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, patience, faithfulness, and happiness. And you will find these in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. So now that you know, let's get straight into the video. So first things first, I'm just going to start with a quick background. Um, this video is like a testimony slash educational video. Well, not educational, it's educational video. So yeah, I'm going to start. Um, so basically all my life I have identified as a Christian, I grew up in a Christian home, I was surrounded by Christians, I grew up in a Christian family, I was surrounded by Christians, you know, um, so, so I identified as a Christian, but I was living in the way of the world, obviously, because I hadn't really found Christ for myself, so my true, um, the beginning of my true commitment to God and just living for Christ started just before lockdown but yeah, that's just me giving you guys a background of my walk with Christ so taking that into account I had no idea what the fruits of the spirit were I didn't even know that they existed until um, last year my partner got me into watching preaching so like we'd watch preachings together and you know sometimes in these preachings um, the pastors would talk about the fruits of the spirit I think to myself this sounds really cool, I wonder what this is. And when I looked it up, I wouldn't really be looking for an understanding, I'd just be looking it up just to see what they are, or like maybe to like take a screenshot and just post somewhere, you know what I mean? But I never really looked them up for like true understanding. And um, and then, you know, more preachings that we watched, the more these things were mentioned, and you know, I still, and I still wanted to know, what were these things? What are these things, God? And then um, I went to church um, sometime last year with my sister, and they were um, the pastor was basically talking to us about all the different gifts that we have, so like prophecy and all of those things. And then obviously they mentioned the fruits of the spirit. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, these fruits once again. What are they? And I think what happened that day is I went home, I checked out what they were. So just really skimming through and not really reading for an understanding. Okay, so that's the background. Fast forward to lockdown. I am a person who is very impatient, but I feel like now I'm much, much better. But I used to be very impatient. So during lockdown, um, even before lockdown, you know, sometimes I would wake up really irritated and really upset for no reason, and I wouldn't know why. And I would wake up upset for no apparent reason, guys, no reason. And I really, I really wouldn't know why. Like, I text my boyfriend and be like, wait, I'm so irritated. And he's like, why? I don't know. I'm so mad. I don't know. And he'd be like, baby, I'm so mad. I'm so irritated. He's like, why? What's happening? But I don't know. Nothing happened. I just woke up feeling this way. So we pray every day together over the phone. And what would happen is, um, before prayer, like before prayer, we'll be talking and I'll just start feeling like so irritated. I feel so mad or like I feel um, impatient. And I would start an argument, just like that. I'll start an argument for no apparent reason. And it was so horrible because I didn't like feeling like that. Like sometimes I'd be so happy and all of a sudden I'm just feeling upset, I'm moody, and I wouldn't like it because it literally felt like I was just taking a back seat and just watching my own body do its own thing. And I didn't like that. So I would start arguments for no reason, I would start fights for no reason and it really hurt me because like I said I didn't like how I was feeling and I didn't want to be the reason why there was unrest in my relationship or like there was no peace in my relationship. I didn't want to be the reason. But if this still happened, I would still start arguments, I would still start fights and it would go on forever and ever and in the end I would feel so upset because you know I'm like I don't know why that happened because I didn't want to feel that way, I didn't want to say that to him. So I think for like quite some time during lockdown and like sometimes I would phone him crying because I really hated how I was feeling and I had no explanation. All I knew is that I was crying, all I knew is that I was feeling upset, all I knew is that I was feeling mad and impatient and I would be crying my eyes out not knowing where it's coming from. Like, um, as lockdown progressed, um, God started like giving me more and more wisdom. 
give more knowledge and like I said understanding like you know stuff about attacks from the enemy and just really also like um, understand that God doesn't want me to be that way. Understand that God doesn't want me to be an angry person. He doesn't want me to be impatient. He doesn't want me to start fights for no reason. He doesn't want me to start fights at all. You know. So I started understanding that, but still, you know, I was still feeling that way. I was like, you know, God, why am I feeling like this? Like I have times where I would ask Him, like, God, why do I wake up mad for no reason? Why am I feeling impatient for no reason? God, why am I feeling this way? You can see me. You can see that I'm hurting, but you're not close to me. Because Mina, I'm still, I'm still feeling this way. I still feel upset and angry for no reason. Why aren't you helping me, God? Because if you want me to be peaceful, why aren't you making me peaceful? So I had that struggle, like, you know, beginning of lockdown, that was like my struggle. And, you know, sometimes I text my boyfriend and be like, babe, you know, I'm feeling that way again. And he'd be like, okay, cool. Um, let me phone you. And he'd phone me and he'd, he'd ask me, should we pray? And like, yeah, let's pray, please. And he would pray for me. And I remember there's this time where because sometimes it's like most people pray together like when I'm feeling that way. But there was this day where like I just couldn't even pray for myself. Like he was praying for me over the phone and I was just kneeling on the bathroom floor and I was crying because I was like, you know, why am I feeling this way? I kinda like teary eyed right now. But like I was just on the bathroom floor kneeling and all I could like just ask myself was like why am I feeling this way? And then as lockdown progressed, I just started um really Trying and under, trying to understand um, how I could be peaceful, how I could be patient, and all of this and all of that stuff. And I remember thinking, really, the fruits of the spirit. This time, really looking for an understanding. And I remember thinking, if God wants me to be peaceful, that's exactly what I'm going to be. I will be peaceful. I will make sure that I'm peaceful. If He wants me to be loving and kind and good and gentle, that's exactly what I'm going to be. If he wants me to have self-control, I'm going to have self-control. And yeah, I was like, I will do it. I will do it. And you know what, guys? If I'm being honest, that's where I was wrong. That's where I was wrong by thinking that I could do it myself. I remember that I tried to do it myself for a while. But I even like, um, I saw this thing and it was like, um, here is what you can do if you're feeling, um, if you're dealing with emotions that you can't handle. And what this person was suggesting is that, uh, it, I feel like it, it, it could have worked for someone else, but me, I don't know, I don't think so. I think at that point I was probably like beyond repair. <laughs> so this person was like, so what you need to do is, let's say you're feeling angry. If you're feeling angry, you need to like look up a verse in the Bible, write it down, write, okay, when I'm angry, and then write down what the verse is. And then so when you're angry, you just read the verse, and then you'll calm down. I was like, oh, great. I wrote down verses for impatience, verses for anger, um, self-control, all of those things. I wrote it down. I remember there's even a verse that I'll never forget. I'll never forget. It says, I think it's in the proverb. It says that um, when you're angry, you can't do the work of the Lord. And I was like, yeah, I'm writing this down. So that when I'm angry, I'm on the phone. I'll wake up angry. I'll look at this and be like, if I'm angry, I can't do the work of the Lord. So then I'll stop being angry. So I did that. I wrote it down. And I told my partner, you know, I found this cool thing, and I feel like it's really gonna work, and blah blah blah. And then game, I wake up and read. I look at the paper, read what it says, and then I would still be angry. And also, what I realized is that um, when I was starting arguments and all of those things, it was always um, just before prayer time. It was just before prayer time, and it was so funny that that morning I had read um, a proverb that spoke about how we should walk into traps that we can see, and it was close to prayer time, um, and we know the enemy sets traps like nobody's business. So close to prayer time, uh, here I am, ready to start an argument when it's prayer time, ready to start the fight, ready to, you know, I'm ready to argue. And just as I was about to, the Holy Spirit brought back that verse to me. He was like, remember what you learned this morning, that you shouldn't walk into a trap that you can see. And I was like, hmm, true, true. And I was like, babe. Why? Blah, blah, blah. And I started to fight. I started the argument. And as that was happening, I felt like the Holy Spirit just kept on saying to me, it's a trap. It's a trap. Don't walk into this trap. You're going to cause unrest. You will be the reason why there's no peace. Don't do this. And I just kept on going, why? Wow. And I couldn't stop. I think there was even a point in my work when I was like, okay, let's just stop arguing. Let's pray. And we'll talk about this later. I was like, no, we can't pray. If there's still this. Like, I was on fire. I was on fire. So, 
yeah, like things like that, guys. Um, but by the grace of God, I'm not that person anymore. I'm not gay anymore. And also, what I realized is that in that moment, it dawned on me that the devil's plan is to divide and conquer. So obviously, if my boyfriend and I are fighting and we're not praying, the enemy can attack us individually, and we will have an advantage because we'll be divided. But God's plan is to unite and conquer. And even the Bible says, let no man separate what God has put together. So can I get an amen? <laughs> can I get an amen? Because thank God, thank God, thank the Holy Spirit for opening my eyes to all of those things. And then we fast forward to um, just middle, not mid last month actually, I think maybe they say last month. Last month is actually when I started really having a serious understanding of the fruit of the Spirit. I came across there's this Bible reading plan from the Bible app. I will put the picture there so that you guys can read it in your own time and just have those peace. <laughs> so uh, I actually accepted this Bible reading plan last year and I just never really got to reading it because I started and I was like, I don't know what's going on here. It's based on Galatians 5 and I was like, okay, fruit of the Spirit. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on in this thing. So I just left it. It's been chilling in my reading plans um, on my app for like almost half a year or almost a whole year and then sometime last month or beginning of this month i'm not too sure anymore um i started a bible study group on whatsapp oh yeah if you guys can join if you want to join just let me know in the comments below so i started a bible reading plan and just to let everyone practice um our reading plans i told them to join that reading plan the galatians 5 one just as a practice but as the when the practice was over, I was like, oh, let me just keep on reading it. And I kept on reading it, and that's when I got true understanding and true revelation of the fruits of the Spirit and what Galatians 5 basically talks about. And the Bible reading plan is called Living in Faith and in Love. I will link it down. That Bible plan was my turning point, honestly. It wasn't the end of me feeling upset, but it was the beginning of me allowing the Holy Spirit to help me with those emotions. And what I learned today, the writer was saying that the flesh, our flesh hates law. It is not a law, it's not law abiding. Our flesh hates the laws of God. So naturally, we will want to go against what God wants us to do or what He wants us to have or how He wants us to live. Meaning that if God is saying that I must be peaceful, naturally, I will not want to be peaceful. If He says I must be loving, naturally, my flesh will want to be the complete opposite. Because the flesh hates law, meaning that it naturally wants to disobey the Word of God. And, and when I understood that, it dawned on me that it was never my place to change my heart. It was never my place to renew my spirit. God never put that responsibility on me. He wasn't like, you are gonna be born an angry child, irritated child, impatient child. But luckily for you, you are gonna change your spirit. No, it was never part of his plan. It was never my responsibility to begin with. I assumed the responsibility that was meant for somebody greater than me. It was meant for the Holy Spirit, not me. In Galatians 5, uh, verse 19 to 1, it talks about the um, the works of the flesh. We can see the fruits of the, the flesh, the works of the flesh, which are jealousy, envy, meanness, hatefulness, all of those things, impatience. And I learned that these things are naturally just lurking in me. They're naturally in my body, ready to come out. They don't need notice. If the opportunity calls for you to be impatient, best believe that you are going to be impatient because these things are naturally lurking in your body, lurking in your spirit, waiting to jump out and do what you must do. Um, we can also find these works of the flesh in Mark 7, verses 20 to 23. Um, they're also listed there when Jesus is listing them. But don't you know that what is in your heart are evil thoughts, uncleanness, hatefulness, all of those things. So these things are what are naturally lurking in our heart, the naturally there. So when I understood that naturally, that's how it is, naturally that's how I'm like, it became kind of easier for me to cooperate in obedience with the Holy Spirit because this person in the Bible reading that I was explaining, was explaining that no, we don't have to change ourselves, but we do have to cooperate in obedience with the Holy Spirit. In Philippians 2 verses 12 to 13, it talks about how the Holy Spirit is at work in us, making us willing and able to obey God because why is he making us because we don't want to it's like for example if your mom says wash the dishes and you're like I'm gonna wash it I'm gonna wash it 
and two days later and still haven't washed it. She will make you wash the dishes. She might come into your room and be like, look and grab you and she'll like, go wash those dishes. She will make you because you didn't want to in the first place. So it's the same. We don't want to be peaceful. We don't want to cultivate the fruits of the spirit. A sinner doesn't want to do what God wants them to do. We naturally just want to sin. So that's why the Holy Spirit is at work in us. God is at work in us every day, making us willing and able to follow Him and to listen to the Holy Spirit. And guys, like, isn't that just so great that God knows that we can't do this on our own and He has given us the Holy Spirit who is helping us to cultivate these fruits on our behalf. And I think again, once I understood that, you know, I was like, okay, this is great. I understood that one, naturally, I want to go against the word of God. Naturally, I want to fight. Naturally, I want to be mean. Naturally, I want to be angry and jealous and envy other people. Two, I learned that it's not my responsibility. It's not my place to change myself. Three, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is his job, his responsibility to work in me. Four, what I have to do is cooperate in obedience with the Holy Spirit. And five, just like, you know, the final nail or the cherry on top is that I need to let it happen that way. It must happen that way. It must be the Holy Spirit working in me and not me working in myself. It must happen that way. That is the natural way that it should happen. That's how God intended it to happen in the first place. And that was my turning point and just really a true understanding of the fruits of the Spirit, of the thoughts. Um, and also, what I also learned in the reading pen was that I need to be intentional. I need to deliberately love. I need to intentionally choose to love. Intentionally choose to be peaceful. If a situation calls for me to be impatient, I need to be patient. But then I shouldn't be like, um, okay, let's say for example, I'm at a queue um, at the bank. And if I'm at a queue at the bank and I start to be impatient, I shouldn't be like, okay, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. Because then that's my own strength and my own work. I just need to be like, you know, Holy Spirit, I'm standing in this queue and I'm starting to feel a little bit impatient. And I can't do this on my own. I can't make myself patient. But I am going to choose to depend on you and to trust you fully that you are going to make me patient in this moment. And then just, just stand there. Don't think about it too much. Just stand there. And before you know it, you're going to be in the bank, out of the bank, and you're going to be great. So it's the same. If you, for example, are naturally a jealous person and you feel like saying something mean about somebody, just do the opposite. Let's say you want to insult somebody because God also talks about how in our heart are insults. If you want to insult somebody, just be like, if you see that person coming and you want to insult them, just tell yourself that, okay, I'm going to compliment the life out of this person and be like, you know what, you come here. I love your jacket. I love your pants. Where did you buy them? Oh my gosh, you look so good today. What are you using on your hair? You smell so nice. What are you wearing? Like those things, choose to be nice. Choose to be what your flesh doesn't want you to be. And not on your own strength, but the Holy Spirit. Depend and rely on the Holy Spirit that He will make you do those things that He will help you, enable, enable you to be good, to be peaceful, to be gentle, to be kind, and to have self-control. So, yeah, and after understanding that, I feel like my life, my life changed. <laughs> yeah, let me say my life changed. My spirit changed. Uh, my spirit was renewed, you know. I started understanding what I was supposed to do. All I had to do was cooperate in obedience and all will be good. And so, um, I kind of had like a week of back to forth arguments with the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure people, I'm sure some of you will think, I am with the Holy Spirit, so I will get what you mean. I mean, argue with the Holy Spirit. There are been situations where He wants me to do something, and I'm like, no, because naturally I just don't want to. And I'm like, no, and He's like, you're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to trust me. You're gonna have to do it. And it's been difficult, but you know, in the end, I'm the one who walks out happy. For example, at this morning, I was praying, and I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, help me to serve other people. Um, help me to, to treat people the way that I want to be treated, just help me to serve and to be, you know, and I was praying and I was on fire and then a few minutes later I was doing something and um, I did something that I wasn't like, you know, that I wouldn't like if somebody did it for me and the Holy Spirit was like, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean what am I doing? <laughs> and he was like, didn't you just pray about treating people how you want to be treated? And I was like, well, yeah. And he's like, okay, so then what are you doing? What is this? And I'm like, oh, fine, okay, fine, I'll do it. So then I fixed the thing. And then I did something else and 
hour and then he was like what what are you doing and i was like well i'm sorting out myself first and he's like well no didn't you care about wanting to serve people didn't you ask me to help you to serve people and i was like yeah i did i did and he's like so then why aren't you serving people why aren't you putting other people first before your own needs and i was like uh well you know i was thinking maybe because that's just naturally what i would do and he was like no you know put this person first put their own needs first and then you take care of your needs afterwards and i was like Oh my gosh i mean i just paid this credit this morning at least give me like a few days but you know so like you know we had like you know some back and forth arguments because obviously i was not ready to go the way that he was leading me but eventually i did and like i said in the end i was the one who was happy i was on his benefited i felt at peace i felt calm and i felt like i did something good and i had another um i had a minor so i hadn't been frustrated or upset in a long time so I think last week or two weeks ago, I had a minor um, inconvenience and I was quite, quite frustrated. Um, kind of took, took some of it out of my boyfriend and yeah, so, but then it didn't last a long time. I remember my partner was saying, oh, look who's happy now. And I was like, no, I'm happy. I'm happy because the devil didn't win. I'm happy because God said, no, you can't keep feeling like this. No, you can't keep living like this. I've been working in you, so you need to start living how I've been teaching you how to live. And we find, and we find that in Galatians 5 verse 16, um, Paul actually says that if you are guided by the Spirit, you can no longer follow the desires of your flesh. You can no longer live by your flesh. And that's exactly what happened. Because I was guided by the Spirit, even though my flesh popped up for a few seconds, it went back quickly because the flesh and the, the Spirit can't live together. They're not comfortable together. One has to be the dominant one. And I thank God that in that moment and in my life right now, the Holy Spirit is the dominant one and I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. So that's basically it for me. And I would really encourage you to read the whole of Galatians 5. It's very helpful. And I will link the Bible study reading plan as well down below so that you can have a look. And I hope that you get the same revelation and even more than I did so that you can be helped as well with anger, with irritation, impatience, all of those things. And thank you so much guys for tuning in. My advice to you would be if you are dealing with the things that I was dealing with, my advice to you would be to really just pray about it and not just really, not just only want to change, but you need to also understand that physically you have to cooperate, cooperate in obedience with the Holy Spirit. Like you can't be like, you want to insult somebody and then you're like, oh God, I don't want to. And the first thing you do is insult the person. At least you're like, you know, God, I don't want to. And then just choose to depend on the Holy Spirit and then don't insult that person, rather compliment them. My boyfriend and I usually talk about as well as that, like, you know, whenever you feel like, um, like saying something mean about somebody, rather say something nice instead. So maybe if you see somebody that you dislike and you like want to say what you always say about them, maybe like, oh, you like, you know, your shoes are so old or something like that, rather say something that's nice or rather just not say anything at all. But then if you really feel like there's something in you, then say, no, say something, something. Rather, this will find the devil, open up your mouth and be like, you know what, I love your outfit. And it's that simple. It's like, I love your outfit, keep moving, because if you stay there for too long, you might end up saying the wrong thing. <laughs> so yeah, just really, so yeah, just really pray about it, cooperate in obedience with the Holy Spirit. And I do early see the Bible study reading plan. Like I said, I will link it here so that you can have a look. And I just really hope that it helps you as well, because I know it's not nice. Um, having those feelings and all of those emotions that we shouldn't be having, especially when you know that the Spirit of God makes you peaceful and happy and gentle and kind and self controlled. When you know those things, you know, it's not nice seeing yourself acting the total opposite. And yeah, and I'm just honestly, I'm so grateful um, to the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful for God's tremendous power that has worked in my life. Like, literally, every single day, God is working in me. And sometimes I look back and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm such a different person compared to how I was at the beginning of lockdown. It's so nice just watching and seeing God changing you. It's honestly such an amazing thing. It's such a blessing. And I encourage you guys to do it as well. I pray that God touches you that's watching. I pray that He touches your heart and that He changes you, that He works in you. And just as He, just as he has worked in me, I really hope that you enjoyed the thoughts video to the Spirit. <laughs> the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, comment.